Hello, everybody. It breaks my heart to have to share this with you uh, about a story that that I'm seeing that I'm seeing here that just came out. As I'm seeing right now, according to excuse me, as I look at my laptop here, but it looks like it was less than 40 minutes ago. Here's a story that broke, and I'm looking on NBC News, and it is about a <clears throat> excuse me a church shooting in Texas. I believe 100 miles east of east of Dallas. Uh, where a pastor was killed and a couple others were injured in the incident. And I bring it up now because I guarantee you that with Kamala and Biden going into office, this is going to turn into a political thing. And it's going to turn into a gun, uh, I almost said gun rights, gun control issue that they're going to come out and they're going to stand on. And you're going to see tears and you're going to see our thoughts and prayers. And I'm not talking about people who are gun rights activists. I'm talking or, or Activists isn't the right word, just gun rights people, people who appreciate the Constitution, people who appreciate the ability to be able to take care of themselves. When you have a gun, things can go awry. They can, right? There's a certain responsibility. I don't know all the details to the story. All I know is from what the what it says here, and more things are to follow. Um, but from what I'm seeing in the in this article, things seem fairly legit. So I'll uh, I'll show a copy of it up here on the screen, and then I'll kind of read it just so you can you can see it and follow and follow along. I'll just show you some screenshots from it. But NBC News: <clears throat> Pastor killed, two others injured in in a Texas church shooting. A pastor was killed, and two others were injured in a shooting at a Texas church on Sunday. Governor Greg Abbott said in a statement. The shooting occurred Sunday morning at Starville Methodist Church in Starville, about 100 miles east of Dallas. The suspect, who is in custody, was allegedly fleeing police after an incident Saturday night and had stuck into the church to hide, Smith County Sheriff Larry Smith said. A pastor at Starville Methodist Church found the man hiding in a bathroom around 9.21 a.m. when he, his wife, and several others entered the church Sunday morning. The suspect left but returned to the church amid an early morning manhunt by authorities. He starts coming toward the front door, and he turns around and lunges at the pastor, who was able to disarm the pastor, it appears this time, Smith said. He used the pastor's firearm, is the one that, interesting, I was worded there, but it's a, it's a quote. He used, the pastor's firearm is the one he used. The pastor is deceased at this time. Another person was being treated for gunshot wound, and their condition was unknown, Smith said. Someone was also being treated related to a fall during the incident. The suspect was found after allegedly stole the pastor's vehicle to flee the church and was caught in Harrison County, Smith said. He had a gunshot wound on his hand, though it was unclear when he was shot. Abbott sent his condolences to the victims of their families Sunday in the statement, which did not identify the pastor or the suspect. The state of Texas is working closely with the first responders and local officials to ensure that justice is served and that the Starville community has the resources it needs during this time, Abbott said. Moving down toward the end. Smith said the incident is being investigated as a capital murder case, but the shooting does not appear to have been motivated by anti-religious sentiment. This is a crime of opportunity for this man, the suspect, Smith said. The church just happened to be here. It could have been one of these houses he went inside, but he knew people were there. I believe he probably just got there to seek shelter. The sheriff did not provide details as to why the suspect was being Sought Saturday, but he said authorities were working on obtaining the arrest warrant for the suspect. Smith did not release the name of the suspect or any other victims in the shooting. So a couple things just to keep in, keep in mind here, just to be aware of. As I said at the beginning of this video, this is going to come out. You watch. I promise you this is part of their playbook. The Democrats are going to bring this out, and anybody who's gun control is going to bring this out as some kind of a, we need gun control reform, we need gun control, we need this, we need this, and they're going to march, and it's going to be these big things, and people are going to, it's going to be this big political push for gun control, okay? So you're going to see that. Uh, the second is, depending on the race of individuals, if there is something where, let's say, actually the only way it would go down, okay, the only way it would go down is if the pastor happened to be dark-skinned, and the church, the church happened to be a place of color, and the suspect happened to be white. At that point, it's going to turn into a big race thing. So let's talk about that really quick. A couple things. Now, that may or may not happen, depending on what's going on. It might just be that everybody's a cockazoid, and it's like, eh, whatever. Passes with that incident then. But those are the two cards that get pulled, all right, in politics now and in this culture. We know 
as I've said in other videos, most gun violence that occurs, including inner cities, which is where the majority of it happens, even though that's not really what gets reported because it's these big, you know, mass shootings or an incident where, you know, a couple people get shot in this case. Um, these are the things that get reported because it plays into the, it plays into the narrative. Okay. It's the thing that makes gun owners and guns look bad. Find everything you can, make them look bad, change the minds of the people, convince the people, get the votes, get your power, disarm the people, more power to the government. It's just, it's the way it gets played. It's no secret. It's what they do. The person going in here, as we saw here at the end of the article, is an it, it said that he is a person who just took advantage of an opportunity. Just so happened to be there. Like the police, like Sharon said, it could have been in a house, it could have been anywhere, but he showed up at the church. It was a place of opportunity. My guess is the pastor was probably armed. Well, we know he was armed. It says he was. He was either holding it, most likely because he saw something going on that wasn't right and he wanted to protect people, or he had it on his hip. Either way, we know that the individual lunged at the pastor, took the pastor's uh, firearm, disarmed him, and shot the pastor. Did he have to shoot the pastor? Why did he shoot the pastor? I don't know. I don't know. But that's what happened. And then he got off on a manhunt, took off, and we saw the incident there. So, again, most guns used in gun crimes are illegally procured either by being stolen, as was the case here, or by, or by uh, black market, as we see pretty common in certain, certain urban areas in this country. So, when this thing comes out, I just wanted you to see it, wanted you to be aware of it. When it comes out and you start seeing all the gun control people and everything come out, just be aware of the facts. Be aware of what's really going on here. This is not a gun issue. The person didn't even have a gun on him. He stole it and took advantage of it to, to help himself. We don't know what he was wanted for. We don't know what he was running for. We don't know what the incident on Saturday was. There's a lot of things here we still don't know. But just be aware of what's going on, okay? I just wanted to bring that to your attention. This is not a gun issue. They're going to try to tell you it's a gun issue. It's not, okay? You're not going to be able to get through to these people. We have facts on our side. We try to show facts. They plug their ears like small children and say, <laughs> I'm sure that right there could be a great, you know, Democrat gun control poster challenge. Because <laughs> that's what they do. Um, it's unfortunate, unfortunate that these people were injured. And it just, it really sucks. It does. But we need to look at the incident for what it is, okay? This isn't a gun issue. The guy did something terrible, took somebody else's gun, took off. The guy, the pastor could have had a knife on him. The guy could have lunged with a knife and stabbed him. In fact, stabbings are actually higher. Uh, what am I trying to say? More people die every year in this country from stabbings or being bludgeoned with hammers, specifically hammers, right, than they do gunshots in this country. So we know that any any tool could have been taken advantage of with somebody who was in a desperate situation, like what this guy was in. Um, and then, of course, he stole the big pastor's car and took off after murdering the pastor. So don't, yeah, don't, don't fall for it. This is not a gun issue. They're going to push it that way. It's not. You're going to hear a lot of really, really bad information. Um, you know, here I'll show you really quick a screenshot of what somebody posted just on my own Facebook timeline uh, today. And you read this. And I'm, I'm actually thinking about doing another call-out video where I'm talking about all the ways in which this is just wrong. Not, 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 it's wrong factually and it's wrong morally. And it conflates a bunch of things that are unrelated in order to try to make a statement and people fall for it because they are ignorant. They are low informed. They just don't know. That's one thing. But when they don't care to know, that's something completely different and that's their responsibility. So I'm not going to let them just get away with that. Anyway, y'all have a good day. This incident sucks. Sorry that it, I'm sorry that it happened, um, but it happened. Okay. And we're going to deal with it as it is. But one thing we're not going to do is allow it to be politicized to say, hey, see, this is why we have to take away people's guns. Because if you remember in Texas, there was a, another shooting that happened. Was it a year ago? Two years ago? I can't remember. Somebody came into a church and, uh, shot one individual and then was aiming to shoot somebody else and somebody from the back of the church i think he came in with that i want to say i could be wrong but i want to say it's a shotgun shot one person when he came in and then was heading to the front of the church and somebody in the back of the church who happened to be an nra instructor remember the people who try to keep people safe by teaching gun safety stood up and uh from the back of the church pulled out his pistol 
placed an incredible shot. I hate to admit, like celebrate and make it sound, oh, it's wonderful. But from that distance, it was a headshot. Uh, very difficult to do, but pretty accomplished shooter. Stood up, took it, because he had a gun. It was not a gun-free zone. And even though it sucks that people died, stop the perpetrator, stop the murderer from going up and murdering the pastor and the other people he was going to murder after that. Okay? That's what guns do. Guns in safe hands, which are most guns, mind you, Guns in safe hands protect people. They keep places safe. Okay? It sucks that this incident happened. It sucks that the person lunged at the gun that was in the pastor's hands. Hip, hands, oh, I don't know. Don't know where it was. Uh, and my guess is that the pastor probably didn't want to shoot anybody. And I don't blame him. Nobody who carries a gun that I know wants to shoot anybody ever. It's a last-ditch effort. So my guess is that the pastor is a guess wanted to talk to the guy, wanted to confront the guy. Maybe he had a gun at his, in his hand, at his side. I don't know, but I know that he wouldn't have wanted to shoot him. But regardless, this incident happened, and again, it sucks. So y'all, just be aware. Watch what these people do. Don't fall for it. Make sure other people know the facts and the truth about it, because it's on our side. It's not on theirs. They're politically advantageous. Like Nancy Pelosi said, never let a good tragedy go to waste. And I guarantee you, Democrats and the gun control people, they aren't.